Today I have the distinct pleasure of speaking with Bernard Tourlon from Eurogold. How are you today, Bernard? Very well. And Bernard, let me start by congratulating you. Your most recent news release said that your solar grade silicon metal process has a 75% lower carbon footprint than the conventional Siemens process. I, obviously, we would like you to tell us a little bit more about this. Well, it's it's very it's simple in a certain way. What we're doing is we're taking our quartz directly and we're transforming it to the higher purity material, 6N and going up. So we're, we're eliminating a complete step that is uh, a little dirty secret that nobody says in the industry. It's very bad. The transformation of metallurgy grade silicon metal to polysilicon uh, requires lots of energy, chemicals, and, and that's really what it is. And nobody really talks too much about it because the carbon effect of the solar panel is such that it offsets it. But I read somewhere that in reality, if you're a true um, greenie and you're buying a solar system, it takes up to six years for you to generate the credit to offset the production one. So this with the Paris uh, meetings that were there and all the discussion, uh, we decided to say, you know what, let's try to figure out what's going to be our carbon footprint. That's when we came up with the realization that versus the, the semen process, uh, we're 75% more energy efficient, basically because we're removing a complete step in, in both of them. Uh, what's not written in the press release, what's also, but is also um, within the documents that, uh, that I have, is that 75% of our remaining carbon footprints is mostly due to the transport, exploration, mining, and everything else. And there are ways for us to go in additional offsetting uh, with regard to the way the process works because we're not looking at building a massive smelter, but we're building a reactor. Our goal is to have those installations closer to the deposit. So by having them closer to the deposit, we can cut also the carbon footprint everywhere else. It's basically those are small steps that we can do that can add to the positive visibility of our project, in addition to what we're doing in the solar field, uh, which is going to be a very competitive pro project. I think this is another example of how competitive and, and the advantages, of course, for the PureVap QVR process. Now, not everybody in our audience may be familiar with your gold, so if I could just give, have you give them a bit of an overview of this technology that you currently have. This technology is sort of an... Um, an improvement on a lot of technologies that already exist. Uh, what it basically is, is we're using in a vacuum furnace, we will be putting our quartz and using um, plasma, to, which is a third state of energy or a different state of energy, to basically transform the quartz into um, high purity silicon metal. Uh, what we've discovered during all the research for the patent, well, well not we, but Pyrogenesis discovered was that um, with all the elements and all the science behind this, uh, we, we should be able to attain our goal of doing ultra high purity material. Uh, and one of the factors that we're working on right now, all issues, is why we issued a news two weeks ago about the ultra high purity results of one of our quartz is since we're trying to demonstrate the, the high value or the, uh, the high purity material, we're trying to use the highest purity material in all area. Uh, you might find this very interesting, but if this worked, we might just be one of the biggest users of high-purity graphite in the, in, in the world because we need high-purity graphite. We just discovered that one of the cleanest ways for us to reach the material is one of the sources of contamination in the material is your carbon source that you're using. So if you're using a very pure graphite uh, then you're, you'll be, and you're using a very pure quartz, then your chances of success are much greater. So sort of funny now that I'm looking at ultra high purity graphite too, but I could be one of the big users out there. All right, Bernard, something that I thought was very interesting, I was reading a column on Investor Intel by Dr. Duchesne, and he was talking about how expensive solar grade silicon sells for and how disruptive your QVR technology could actually be for the industry. Can you explain that? Could you dumb that down for us just a little bit more? Since we're doing it in one step, all right, we're eliminating a complete transformation step. That's actually where 90% of the cost is. And we're doing so fundamentally, if we reach our goal, we should be able to make the material, uh, the ultra high purity, 
for close to the same cost that they're making the metallurgy grade silicon metal, which is another six billion dollar a year business. So that that opens up for us so many markets. It's insane because there's a specialized market for ninety eight five. There's a market for ninety nine nine, and the 90, there's multiple markets. I'm focused more on the ultra high market at the startup with because then that allows me to. Uh, when I do my PEA on my deposit, be able to say, okay, because of my process transfer, I will get X amount of profit generated per tons of material. That's the goal. But there's so many markets we're going to be in. We're, since we're doing it one step, we should be doing it for the cost of the raw material that our competitors are buying it. Okay, that's if it works. All my competitors that make polysilicon buy metallurgic grade silicon metal from the big buyers out there. All right. That's the that's the key competitive advantage. Just even before you you add on the carbon credit, that's just an extra one. That's all. So what should we expect then, as investors and shareholders say in the next couple of months? Because as you were pointing out to me previously, the shareholders are really starting to understand what a dynamic story this is, and you're really, as you said, catching the perfect wave. Tell us a little bit more about this and what we should expect. Well, first of all, we're going to be coming out with the, with the first batch of results very, very soon. Um, those results will be an indicator light for us for the pathway to reach our goal. Then we've got to figure out how to scale it up and how to control our costs. Um, because we've sort of, by doing a lot of the R&D that we've, we've done in discussion with Pyrogenesis, we have a very good idea how to go to the, the target reach. And so now we're going to have to implement them. One of the big work we're going to do once, you know, once spring finally arrives um, is we got to go back in the field and start drilling the resources. Uh, we took a deliberate decision last year not to spend our precious capital raised through flow through on doing exploration, which I don't think gets the biggest bang for the buck at the beginning stage. But next year, uh, I mean this year, going to do some exploration is going to give us a big bang on the two properties because... Uh, uh, we have some good feeling that we'll be able to come up with, so with some decent sized numbers that are going to support our operational goal. And then naturally, as the success gets proven, what we want to do now is go out of uh, our little bubble, which is Quebec and Ontario a little bit, and just go out to the world and tell them, listen, we have a process where we can make solar-grade silicon metal cheaper, better, cleaner than everybody else. You want to get on board? Yes. That's, that's just what we have to do. Well, speaking of getting on board, thank you so much, Bernard, for updating us today. It's always a pleasure. You're welcome.